under attack. It's war right now. And many of our people are sleeping through a revolution, you know. And so uh, 22 states, and as Byron Allen said very eloquently on uh, his show, The Griot Awards, the other night, he said 44 states are considering adopting that that bill, that policy called critical race theory, where they're not going to teach you that most of the United States presidents were slave owners, you know, and most of them, you know, had uh, children by their slaves that they owned, and as Ch Thomas Jefferson, Sally Hemings, and that whole history. But that's a serious, serious thing. What's going to happen in the next, over the next 10, 20, 30 years to African American children who don't know who Maya Angelou is, who don't know who Bo James Baldwin is, who don't know who Curtis Mayfield is, who don't know who Marvin Gaye is. And that's not what's going to happen if we stepped out here right now and stopped 10 teenagers and asked them, who's Nina Simone? Hmm. You went from the pinnacle who is, who right is to Maya? a level when you said Nina Simone. Who's Maya? So who's, that, ja who's James Baldwin? So, Any of them. So that includes all of those that stood for more than their art. <clears throat> who, so let's but think about what's happening right now, not what's going to happen, what's happening now. Is that by design? Of course it is, but it's always been the design. There's a, there's a saying that in this film, Maya Angelou quotes uh, a, uh, uh, a famous author, uh, I think his name is uh, Percy Julian, uh, and, and she says, as he said, it was ever thus. I mean, it was always this way. It was always by design. From the minute they grabbed you from the shores of Africa and, and kidnapped you and put you in the holes of slave ships, the design was always to keep you in the dark and close the mind so no light could enter into the so-called Negro's mind. That was always the design. But I have a chapter in a book that I've written called Soul on Fire, and one of the chapters is called The Miseducation of the Negro by the Negro. So Say that again? The Miseducation of the Negro, which was the, was the, the title of the famous book by uh, uh, one of the great African-American authors, uh, uh, and I s took that title and, um, and spun it to apply to what's happening now called the miseducation of the Negro by the Negro. And what we're saying, or what I'm saying is that we are perpetuating that ignorance. We're perpetuating because many of us are now in the positions of higher education, principals, teachers, even presidents of colleges. And so we can't continue to blame um, other folks, white folks, for hiding that history. Mm -hmm. That's, they were using that as a technique to, to maintain their rule. But what happens when we start or stop passing it down? I have to say this to you. <clears throat> My father was way over 100, he was 104 when he passed 10 years ago. And he spoke to me and spoke in the aspect of, they kept me, when I say they, I use it plurally and universally, the powers that be or whatever, at that time, overtly, stopped me. Mm -hmm. You will get your education, but I want you to also understand that when the floodgates open, a lot of people will run from it. They don't have no excuse now. Care to parlay on that? Well, of course. There comes a point where we have to recognize how blessed we've been with all the different saviors that have come to us. You know, from Harriet to Sojourner to David Walker to Frederick Douglass to, you know, Carter G. Woodson. Uh, father of the month, you know, that we have architect of that month, African American History Month, which should be every month. It should be regulated to one month, and that wasn't his idea. That's other folks, you know, giving us one. Uh, but we should never accept that it's only one month that we should be talking about, as we're doing now, African American history. 
you know, but look at all those people. Look at that long succession of saviors, of, re of reformers, of freedom fighters that were sent. You know, Paul Robeson and Elijah Muhammad, you know, and on and on and on. And so we have no excuse other than uh, if we ignored those people. You know, I read something the other day that says there's nothing that has not been said already. There's nothing that we can say that hasn't been said. There's nothing that Maya or, you know, or Malcolm or, you know, Elijah or Garvey have not said, but we haven't been listening. So it has to be said again. <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun, but we haven't been listening. And so, yeah, how can you have an excuse when you look back at this long succession of people who gave their lives, Dr. Martin Luther King and, you know, and others who gave their lives to open up these doors and, um, and, and the thing about this particular film, Maya Angelou, is she mentions a whole uh, group of individuals that once young people or old people see the film, they should want to go and, wow, she mentions James Baldwin. Well, have you ever read a book by James Baldwin? You know, he has a host of books. You know, Go Tell It on the Mountain, you know, The Fire Next Time, Blues for Mr. Charlie, you know. Um, you know, she mentions a Mary Rock. Have you ever read Blues People? You know, um, she mentions Langston Hughes, one of the you know greatest poets in American history. And so the film just doesn't focus on Maya. Maya talks about these people because this was her circle. This is how she socialized, and this is what the kind of this is the kind of energy and knowledge and information that actually shaped and molded her. Can you imagine any at any given day or any given Friday night all the way to Saturday night and Sunday and you're sitting around and Lorraine Lorraine Hansberry is right there and James Baldwin is here and uh, John Henry Clark is here and Amiri Barak is over here and Ossie and Ruby Davis are over here and Max Roach. And this is what they did. Not for pay. Not to get paid and this not to socializing to, not to even be on camera. But to socialize and, and, and do the, you know, do the wisdom and try to come up with ideas of how we're going to get out of this predicament that we in. Do you think young people, <clears throat> young entertainers, more so now of all ethnicities, are doing that now more so now than ever before? No, we're not doing it. Now we're, you know, now they're, they're, most of our their faces are buried into devices. We're in the matrix now. Could you parlay a little deeper for those that don't understand? <laughs> no, they're not doing it. You know, how many coffee shops do you know of in Newark where you can just sit down she for hours dollars, yeah. and hours and just talk and have some coffee or you tea? You got to buy a couple of coffees. Yeah. You know, so uh, <laughs> that's the kind of places when you travel throughout the world, you can hardly go any place that you don't have cafes where you can sit inside, outside, and the primary, uh, the primary goal for that, those kind of businesses is not just to make money, to, but provide what you just said, socialization. You know, I was, with, I was at a funeral the other day, and a Muslim brother that died, 79 years old, passed away, he was one of the pioneers in this city of building, uh, helping build the Nation of Islam. And we were just talking about how many people, how many deaths had taken place just in the last month. And hundreds of people were there, couldn't even get a parking space. Both parking lots were full. And I said to a brother, you know, this is, um, you know, he said, yeah, I see everybody. I see people I ain't seen in years. And, and I said, yeah, but that's the problem. These are our only socialization sources, Janazas and Juma. Could you explain that for those who don't know what that is? Janazah is just a term for a Muslim funeral service. So it's the same thing, whether you're Muslim or Christian. Funerals and... The inn. Yeah, funerals. Here. That's, that's where we socialize. <laughs> Church and funerals. <laughs> and at one time, that used to be the gathering place for fellowship and church. Right, they, right. They used to be social centers. The churches were open. You know, we learned my first basketball you know, uh, experience was at a church because most churches had gyms. They had gyms. And they would open them up. 
Yes. You know, and so most of the schools are closed today. Why? And that was at that was something that was uh, after you ran home and ate, did your homework or whatever. Go back to the gym. You know, and there was older brothers there who ran those gyms that we know and became pillars of the community, you know, Mr. But Travis, we don't communicate Mr. anymore. Mr. Bradley, you know, Mr. Percy Oliver, all of those guys. Yeah, yeah, and so you not only got recreation, but you got recreation. Ooh. Same word, but you look at it a different way. It does, does, just doesn't mean exercise True. and sports. Your mind, yeah. your heart. You get recreated your cultivation. there. You get, you, and you, you experience fellowship. You get wisdom passed down from the elders, you know, Chest to the younger people. Too. All that, all that. It's a rites of passage. <laughs> but what we're going to do if all the all the schools gyms are closed? And so, and then we wonder why our kids are, you know, running rampant and just in the streets. Now I have to ask this here <clears throat> for our audience: Is that urban, or is that everywhere? Well, good it's like, question. <clears throat> good question. Well, we say you know when America gets you know cold, we get pneumonia. <laughs> it's like the parakeet in the cave, you know. Uh, it affects society in in general, but it affects us worse. Is that because of the numbers that's in the urban communities more so, the volume of people? I think it's because of the poverty, of the mind, the spirit, and the economics, you know. Uh, it affects us more. If we're not socializing, I just gave the example of the elephants. If we're not socializing, we ain't, we ain't passing down the wisdom. We're not, we're, not, um, we're not showing each other the plug. We're not showing each other how to get the bag. So they full of, they're full of energy, no knowledge, and just reacting. Yeah, we're in a serious time that, you know, that, that the devices of the Internet, even the people that created the Internet and Facebook, have even said it has destroyed, almost destroyed social interaction, the way we communicate as human beings. People don't want to talk anymore. What we're doing right now is very rare. And a lot of people you talk to today don't even, can't even conceive of having a conversation for a half hour or 45 minutes. Because everything is text, tweet, email, like you said, about the instant thing, you know, and so. And if I disagree with you, <clears throat> I cut you off. It's not a, I can disagree to still <laughs> right. agree. Right. We was a block, cancel, <laughs> delete. <laughs> so, you know. That wasn't nice, but I like the way you did it there. Block, but cancel, this, yeah, this is delete. The, this the, right, the writers in the 1940s, like. And, and earlier, like Nietzsche and Huxley and Eric Fromm, these people were talking about the greatest danger was us becoming robots, losing our humanity. Stay there, please, Hafiz. Now I'm going to take us back to Flash Gordon, and I'm going to let you take it for me. <clears throat> because we're there now. Yeah, we in it. We're there now. <laughs> Flash Gordon, when I was growing up, was this uh, guy that was traveling out of space, and all you heard throughout the picture was, mm, he's talking. But what is coming to pass, the Jetsons and things of that nature, they're the cartoons. Everything is coming to fruition now. There's yeah. soon going to not be paper money. There's soon, as you see in the uh, supermarkets, they don't need no one there. So the jobs yeah. are starting to get very, very, very light. Yeah, yeah so in, in keeping with our theme, of, of Maya and her importance and the people, you know, that shaped and molded Maya. Uh, this is what these elders were telling us. This is what even the elders before them, the Native Americans, was telling us. You know, after, you know, That's a whole after, the, after you mess up the water, after you poison the water, after you poison the air and the fish and the Mess the with fur. the sun. After that, the Native Americans say, you won't be able to eat that money. You know, so we're there. And the elders have been trying to tell us. And we're at a time now. We have to go back. That's why Maya is so important. That's why James Baldwin is so important. Because, uh, you know, I like to tell people that Maya Angelou, we refer to her as a writer, 
a poet, an essayist, a novelist, 